It's happening, everyone knows it, prices are rising. But what is lesser known is that there are some specific steps that you can and should be taking right now when you see those prices increasing. Hi, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. So our goal is always to help you spend less and save more. Now, it's not a surprise to any of you that that is becoming increasingly more difficult. We have runaway inflation, we have rising prices, we have snafus all along the line of the supply chain. Now, in 2022, we've particularly noticed these things. Larry and I have been dropping a bunch of videos lately to help you save on everything from groceries to gas to your utility bills. But what we thought we really wanted to do today was get down to the practical steps. What does that really look like in our family on a day-to-day, month-to-month, basis that we are taking these specific steps in order to help us to beat those rising prices. So we're going to run through each of the steps in order and we have five of them to share with you today. Let's get going. Okay. The first step that we would recommend to cope with these rising inflationary prices is to stay calm. Don't panic. You know, panic buying The only thing that it actually does is A, it makes a whole lot of money for the manufacturers of those products, and B, you wind up with spending more money on things that you actually don't need because you've not taken the time to even assess what it is that you need before you go out and start panic buying those things. So you wind up with a whole bunch of one thing and not enough of other things. Don't panic buy. But the question I think is, why do people panic buy? So psychologists and sociologists have studied this. There are three like main reasons why people actually panic buy in the first place. And these three factors are fear, Mm -hmm. the perception of scarcity, Mm -hmm. and a coping mechanism that helps you feel like you're in control. So here is the bottom line of this first step. We don't panic we plan. So what we all need to do is take a deep breath and take your time. It will be much better spent by taking the next four steps that we're going to talk about and planning what you're going to do in order to put a hedge against some of these rising costs. Step number two is take stock in what you have. Now, we've talked about this a lot on this channel. (laughs) You need to have a running inventory. Part of the reason we go out and buy things consistently at the store that we don't need is because we don't know what we actually have. So having that running list that tells you exactly what you have in your refrigerator, what you have on your counter, what you have in your pantry, and what you have in your freezer, super important. But you know what? You should not stop there because there are a lot of things around our house that we actually buy on a regular basis and perhaps need on a regular basis that have nothing to do with things that we actually eat. So in addition to those inventories, you need to know what you have on hand and what you need to stock when it comes to non-perishable items. So you don't want to look just at food. You want to look at the non-perishable items. Now, we buy a lot of other things besides food. For instance, soaps, conditioners, shampoo, maybe razor blades, razors, paper good products. There are so many other things that we purchase on a regular basis. I would suggest making a general listing Mm -hmm. of what you regularly buy, maybe weekly or monthly, so you have an idea of what you might need to stock up on. So this leads us right into the third point, which is research what you need. So how do you know what you need? you are going to look at your inventory sheet and physically look at your freezer, look at your pantry. And you know what you're looking for? You're looking for gaps. You're looking for those areas that you think, "Mm, I'm not feeling like I have enough, say, barbecue sauce, or I'm not feeling like I have enough tomato paste. Happened to us very recently. I got in our pantry. Now, our pantry is organized like a store is. 
So we have all of the canned goods in one area. We have all the tomato products in one area, all of the items that one might use for baking, all the sugar or sugar substitutes in one area. So it makes it really easy to look. It's all grouped together. So I could see immediately we had like three cans of tomato paste or something literally sitting on the shelf. That became our gap. And it went on a list that we used to go to the grocery store. That is, guess what? It's called our gap list. I know it's like very intuitive. This is the gap. This is what we're looking to fill. So I knew when I went to the store, I was looking for those items at the lowest price possible that I could purchase them for. And what Hope did was she found out that the local Walmart had 50 cent cans of basically different types of tomatoes in a can. So there were, I don't know what the different kinds are, but you you bought about three different kinds, I think. So we were able to stock up on those items and we bought quite a few and fill that gap that we had in our pantry. You also wanna look at things like garbage bags, Ziploc bags, there's just all kinds of things that we use on a daily and weekly basis. So as mentioned before, make a list of the things that you regularly buy. What do you buy on a monthly or weekly basis? And uh, the other thing that we need to do is let's, let's think twice about the items that we want to buy. Do we really need them? You know, just to give this thing a swing, last month, I went one whole month without coffee because we you know we talk about coffee a lot. We we love coffee, but I wanted to see if I could go a month without it. What if the prices shot way up on coffee and we no longer could afford it? Could I do without? Well, I found out that I could. So there are things that, you, that we all can do to make some changes to our need list. We now all know that Larry could deal without coffee. I did not join him on his quest, however. So we're really questioning whether I could do without coffee if I needed to do without coffee. I think she could. <laughs> I think she could. All right. Here's a couple other questions. When we're talking about researching what you need, here are some other things we were just throw out there on the table, so to speak, for you to think about. Um, one of those things is that you have a prioritized list of those needs. Now, there's my magic words again. I say it all the time on this channel, prioritized. That means the things that are most important to you are at the top of that list. You know you're going to buy them. You're going to perhaps buy them more frequently than you do other items. You know you really want to have them on hand. If you want that, make sure it's at the top of that list. The other question is to ask yourself, what do I need in a month? If you're looking at, let's say you're looking at your pantry and let's say I had seen, I don't know, 10 cans of tomato paste on the shelf instead of three. And I would look at those 10 cans and say, how many cans of tomato paste am I using regularly? How long does it take me to go through three cans of tomato paste? Do I even know? If I have, let's say I have a couple of jugs of real maple syrup, how long does a jug of 32 ounces of maple syrup last us? Larry's going to give you a tip. I want you to pay attention because in about 30 seconds here, he's going to lay an amazing tip on you that you're going to go, I can't believe I didn't think of that because it works so perfectly for us to be able to judge how long items are going to last us. But when are you gonna, what are you going to need in a month? What are you going to need in three months? So eight cans of tomato sauce or tomato paste probably wouldn't last us for three months. Then I would know, oh, wait a minute. In the next couple of months, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm stocking up on that. So know how long items are lasting you and what quantity of items, how long that quantity is lasting you. One month, three months, six months, really super helpful. Larry, how do you know exactly how long items are going to last us once they're opened? Well, a really simple plan that you can put into effect. Uh, when I open a brand new can of coffee or a bag of coffee, depends on what form it's in, I'll put a date on it, opened on this date. So let's say I opened one up today. Today happens to be March 20th. I'll put March 20th down. Then when I empty the can, I'm going to take a look at the date that it's emptied and the date that I put, mm -hmm. that I opened it, how much time has elapsed. What I found in general is that a can of coffee, we're not talking about a real big can, maybe about a 24 ounce can, will last us one month. So we can go one month on a can of coffee. Now I can look in our pantry and if we have five cans of coffee in there, then I know we have a five month supply. It's really that simple simple. Put a date on any item that you want to track, the, I, the date that you open the item, and then track how long it takes for you to empty that item. That'll give you an idea of how long these items are lasting. 
Now we want to always bring it back to the topic of the program, which was how are you going to use these steps we're showing you in order to save money, despite the fact that prices are rising. So let us just tie it into a real practical point for you. So as you might imagine, like coffee, pretty doggone high. It really is still high on our prioritized list of what we buy regularly at the grocery store. But despite the fact that Larry just gave it up for a month, it's still actually pretty high on our list. So we are looking and watching prices on coffee. We already know that a can of coffee is going to last us about a month after we open it. When we see those prices rising, we got a couple of different choices. We can know where that price point is that we're willing to buy coffee and stock up on coffee. We want you to stick with us because we're going to show you a trick that we use every month with our grocery budget that allows us to automatically have stocking up money to allow us to stock our pantry and not break our grocery budget to pieces. So let's say that we see that coffee, those coffee prices rising. We have a couple of choices. We can either wait for the price to drop. Where we want to stock up on it, or we can actually cut back on the amount of coffee that we're making each day and that we're drinking each day. So you, you need to know the factors that are in play and constantly be balancing them. And of course, right along with all of that, look for sales on coffee. That's how we happened to buy about, I think we bought about six cans from Kroger when they went on a really good sale and we stocked up on it while it was low. We'll probably never get that price again, especially with everything rising at a pretty regular rate now. But if you can stock up a little bit, that's kind of a flat line hedge against inflation because you're just going to be operating on the price you paid at the time that you stocked it up. Okay, step number four. So Larry and I, once again, we've stayed calm. We've taken stock of what we have. We made a prioritized list of what we need. We've researched what we need, the prices we're willing to pay. Here's step number four. We are prepared to make changes. Now that's a really hard thing for us to hear. It's a hard thing for any of us to hear that what we have become accustomed to may not be the norm moving forward and we're going to have to flex. Yeah. But I do think that that's absolutely going to be necessary going forward. So when we talk about being prepared to make changes, don't spend money that you don't need to spend. Literally, this is just not the time to be doing that. Um, here's another example of how we recently learned flexibility and it has to do with where we shop. Well, Hope got a tip from, I think, one of the viewers yeah, was. that Walmart was a little bit cheaper on some items than Aldi. So we decided to check it out. Now, we don't really happen to prefer shopping at like Walmart. Walmart. It's just so big. There's nothing really- I don't like it at there's all. There's nothing really <laughs> wrong with Walmart we're not we're not knocking them but it's just it's just not our store of preference that we really like Aldi Aldi's are small we know the store we know where everything's at we really don't know Walmart very well so we kind of wander around there trying to find items we're looking for <laughs> and become kind of a treasure hunt <laughs> looking but, like lost people <laughs> but if if we're really willing to buckle down and get some better prices on things, we're going to bring Walmart into the equation. We also have a Kroger store that we have found good markdowns at. It's not our favorite Kroger store. It's, it's just not as nice. It's not as neat. We have one in a real nice part of town. It's kind of a, a preppy Kroger. This one, this one really isn't so much, but they have great prices. So we're willing to do that in order to help hedge off the inflation. So everything we tell you to do, we are learning it right along with you. We too are mm -hmm. learning flexibility. And you know what? It's been really good for us and it's helping us to save money yeah. by looking at different stores than we generally shop at, uh, by be, being willing to listen to what other people who are also frugal are telling us to do. Because you know what? Y'all were right. It was the cheapest place that I have found canned goods in months by being flexible enough to listen to you and going to Walmart, even though it would not have been my first store of choice. And you were right. And you know what, guys? I'm going to be going back there again. So our point within the be prepared to make changes is find places other than what you're used to going to that might be cheaper. Go ahead and do some research. Get out there and, and look and see if there aren't some other stores you can go to that will help you save a little bit of money. 
Here's another point under the fact that you need to be prepared to make changes. You also need to be prepared to embrace delayed gratification. We are so accustomed to be able to walk in a store and find exactly what we want and buy it. And that may or may not be the case going forward. So we're going to have to know what we want, be prepared to shop, and be prepared to wait until we find what we want at a price that we're willing to to pay. Bargains are still out there. You got to know how to wait and look for them. Mm -hmm. We also need to figure out what areas that you have control over. What areas in your budget can you adjust? Now, there's some areas we can't adjust. We can't adjust our mortgage. We can't adjust the utility bills, although we can we can do some things to adjust those, but we can't we can't adjust how much they charge us for these things. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of fixed charges, but there's some areas in your budget that you can reduce by just not spending as much money on those. That might be going out to eat or having some fun or going to a play. There are things that we can control over and those are the things we're going to need to adjust to put that money into areas that are costing us more. Now you want to know how to take control over some of these areas that actually are costing you more money right now. You want to drop your grocery budget. You want to spend less on gasoline. You want to spend less on electricity, spend less on a utility bill. We just dropped videos in the past four or eight weeks on each one of those topics. So if you're interested in delving more deeply into one of those topics, I'm going to make sure that all four of those videos are listed in the description of this video. And we just want to remind you that if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider being a subscriber. We just really enjoy our Under the Median family. All right. Now, this next point is probably literally the most important thing that we do when it comes to controlling the amount of money we spend, even though prices are rising. And that is that we've gotten really, really good at figuring out how to streamline our budget. We're going to give you a practical example. Hope and I talk quite a bit about the 10% challenge. Well, what is that? It's when you get together with your spouse and you consider areas in your budget that you can drop by 10%. Look for any area. Look at all of your areas, all of your budget categories, and see if there aren't maybe three or four that you can drop by 10%. That will help boost your overall budget. We just had a viewer that sent me a note, said she did this. They're saving over $1,000 a year, guys, wow. just by sitting down for 20 minutes together and brainstorming ways that they can cut each of their budget categories by 10%. We would love to know in the comment section, because we've talked so often about this, have you tried the 10% challenge and has it been helpful to you? We would really, really love to know that. Did, now, Did you notice that Hope said 20 minutes? This doesn't take all evening mm -hmm. to do. It's not something that needs to be real burdensome. Try to go through very quickly each yep. category and look for ways to drop it. Now, after you look for those ways to drop it, that's when you're going to go ahead and you are going to make those adjustments. Follow through with those ideas, make the adjustments, and then that should definitely allow you to lower the amount you're spending every month in your budget. Now, if you're concerned about inflation and aren't we all, oh, yeah. oh, listen, yeah. check out this video. It's right over there. Um, we did charts to show you exactly how inflation impacted prices in 2021. And then we went through a list of ways that we believe in 2022 that that inflationary rate is going to continue to impact frugality and budgeting strategies in 2022.